we are going to review the concepts on oxidation numbers. So I will do simple ones first. You know that when you have a compound, when you have a compound, it is electrically neutral. There'll be no little number written up here. That means that the, there's as many pluses as there are minuses, they add up to zero. So calcium is an alkali metal. This is the same charge as we've been learning since September. Calcium has a charge of plus two. Oxygen has a charge of minus two. It is a compound, so it'll add up to zero. So the charge it takes when it forms an ion is the same as its oxidation number. The oxidation number for calcium is plus two. For oxygen is minus two. Let's do a little bit trickier of a compound. This is phosphoric acid. Whenever you see H in the front of a compound, its charge is plus one. Hydrogen can only do a couple things. If it's in the beginning of the compound, it's plus one. If it's at the end of the compound or bonded to a metal, it's minus one. If it's standing by itself as H2, it is zero. So I've got three hydrogens that are each a plus one in front. I don't know what phosphorus is in this particular case, but oxygen's one we can usually count on to be a minus two. There is no number up here, so this is a compound, so they all add up to zero. So it's going to be plus three from hydrogen. One phosphorus, which we're going to call X. Four oxygens that are each minus two. And it's set it equal to zero. Now it is a math problem. So you add eight to each side. So three plus X is equal to plus eight. X in this case is plus five. So the oxidation state of phosphorus is plus five. Okay, now I'm gonna do some polyatomic ions. So polyatomic ions are not electrically neutral. They have a charge. So when there's a little number written up there, that is the charge of my polyatomic ion. So in this case, it does not add up to zero. So you can say chlorine is the one I'm unsure of because oxygen I know is minus two. And there's four of them. So you're going to say X plus four times minus two is equal to minus one. This minus one comes from this charge right here. So in this case, X minus eight equals minus one. I'll add eight to each side. And I get X is equal to a plus seven. The oxidation state of chlorine in this particular polyatomic ion is plus seven. Oxygen is minus two. Here's another poly. So there's always going to be an element bonded there that you know what's going on. So for example, you know that oxygen here is a minus two. So there's always going to be elements that you can count on. So in this case, we don't particularly know what chromium is. Chromium is a variable charge metal, and he's been called X since the beginning of time. So the ones that are going to be called variable charge metals are usually in the 
middle of the compound. <clears throat> so we'll do some more examples where you get to see most of the time you can find some elements that you can count on that you know what their oxidation number is. So in this case, it's 2x, then 7 oxygens I'll add to it, and the overall charge in the polyatomic ion is minus 2. So 2x minus 14 is equal to minus 2. Does everybody see where those numbers come from? Let's add 14 to each side. And we get 2x is equal to plus 12. So the charge on each chromium in this compound is plus 6. That's the oxidation state of chromium. So let's do some reactions now. This is one of the reactions we did in our demos. And remember, you cannot change the way compounds occur. You have to balance in order to account for them. So we're going to figure out this is a redox reaction. I know that already. And how I know that is that if you have elements that are standing by themselves on one side of the equation and are involved in a compound on the other side of the equation, it is a redox reaction. Because if you remember, elements in their elemental state have an oxidation state of zero. Then we go to the other side. This is an ionic compound, meaning that there's a positive charge in the front, a cation, a negative charge in the back, an anion. Magnesium is an alkali earth metal, so always has a charge of plus two. Oxygen has a charge of minus two. Now you have to figure out which was oxidized and which was reduced. Remember our friend Leo the lion goes ger. So losing, if we lose electrons, it's oxidized. If we gain electrons, it's reduced. Magnesium goes from a zero to a plus two. Does he do that by losing electrons or gaining electrons? Remember, electrons are negatively charged. If you lose the negatives, you get more positive. Did he get more positive or more negative? He got more positive. That means that he lost electrons. So magnesium was oxidized. Oxygen went from a zero to a minus two. Sometimes reduced is easier to pick out because the charge goes down or the charge is reduced when you are reduced. So oxygen is the one that is reduced. He went from a zero to a minus two by gaining electrons. Remember, electrons are negatively charged. Here's another one that you got to see happen. I know this is a redox reaction because oxygen is standing by itself on one side of the equation and it's in a compound on the other side of the equation. But let's go through the math. I know it's a redox reaction already because oxygen changes oxidation state. Now let's figure out what's going on in sodium chlorate. You've got one sodium. What's the charge on sodium? Plus one. You don't necessarily know what chlorine is, but you do know that there's three oxygens that are each minus two. Uh, 
I'm going to add 6 to each side. And I get 1 plus x is equal to plus 6. So the charge on chlorine in this case is plus 5. Now notice sodium did not change. That means that sodium is not really taking place in this reaction. He is not exchanging electrons at all. So oxygen goes from minus 2 to 0 because he lost some negatives, right? So he lost electrons. He was oxidized. Chlorine went from plus 5 all the way down to minus 1. He got much more negative. His charge went down or his charge was reduced, so he was reduced. In this case, chlorine was reduced and oxygen was oxidized. There's one on there that everybody was asking about. Let's just do it together. What's the charge on carbon in this particular chemical equation? Is zero, standing by itself. Hydrogen is at the beginning of the compound here. What is the charge on hydrogen in this compound? Plus one. Oxygen's going to be minus two, minus two, minus two, minus two. Not by himself, he's in a compound on each one of these cases, so we know his charge is going to be minus 2. Now let's figure out what sulfur is. So I've got two hydrogens that are plus 1. I've got one sulfur I'll call X. I've got four oxygens that are minus 2. It is a compound, so I'm going to set it equal to 0. So X is equal to plus 6. The charge on sulfur is plus 6. Let's go to the other side. Carbon is one of those ones that can do lots of different oxidation states. I've got one carbon that's bonded to two oxygens that are minus 2. So in this case, the charge on carbon is plus 4. Who can look at sulfur and tell me what the charge is on that right away? It's exactly the same math, isn't it? It's attached to two oxygens. So let's look. Hydrogen did not change its oxidation state. So hydrogen wasn't playing redox here. Oxygen did not change its oxidation state, so it's not playing either. What happened here was sulfur went from plus 6 to plus 4. Does this charge go up or go down? Down. So that means that sulfur was reduced. Carbon went from 0 to plus 4. He lost some negatives. Those negatives he lost are called electrons. So he was oxidized because he lost electrons.